about 600 homes and not 850 homes. For a neighborhood of this scale, it creates quite a bit of walking distance to facilities or to places around. Have you given it a more integral thought to see what could be integrated into your site, specifically along the station? Because you're showing your diagram over there, and you've got those yes. red blocks. It says that is obviously to come in future phases. Mm -hmm. But with 850 homes coming in this area, is there a clear thought to the content of non residential users and what they might be? So, for example, at one stage, you have non residential users along the southern end. We kind of lost that. That's become a residential ish. Yes. Yes. Um, for me, the concern is obviously because the numbers are high. Have you thought about that? Um, I really do like the hierarchy of movement that you've spoken about. Mm -hmm. But in terms of landscape, um, you talk about the big boulevard coming through. Have you looked at a network of landscape spaces within this? That would, I mean, it's more of a comment than a mm -hmm. question at the moment. But I'd just like to understand your landscape strategy a bit more because mm -hmm. it felt a bit pity mm -hmm. in terms of where streets are boulevards and where streets need to connect. Because you've got a massive resource on your edge right there that you could actually put mm -hmm. a little bit green in. And I think generally, in terms of hierarchy of streets, all really good. But just trying to understand your design code a bit more, what you're fixing, what you're not in terms of your public spaces, what level of control you want on your public spaces mm -hmm. needs to be understood. And sorry, we've just seen the design code now. Yes, that is a still work in progress. Yeah. So it will be improved with all the comments that we will receive today as well. Because the worry is this is an OPA. And a lot of illustrative ideas get lost. Yes. Like the design code doesn't encapture them properly. Mm -hmm. I don't know if Shaz would talk on it. Uh, no, it's just a question. Yeah, you've merged into a bit of yeah. a yeah. Sorry. 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 So I've got no questions. All right. Uh, Tim? Um, thank you. I'd like to understand again the parking provisions. You, your guidance document says on street and podium park. Yes. You're providing that. Yes, but the majority of them are in podium parkings. We have, I think, around 20, maximum 30 on a street parking. That we, we have a couple of them along the boulevard, and the majority of them are along this route. But this is something that we discussed in previous uh, DRPs as well, that if we have to provide on a street parking, that basically this on street parking is considered visitors and blue batches. Uh, although we have a account visitors and blue batches, blue batches as well inside the podiums. Um, but the majority of them are contained in the podium parking. Yeah. The majority of parking? Yeah. Is in the podium parking. Podium parking, yes. And the majority of the disabled is? It's distributed equally. We have to provide on the street just in case of visitors, and we have to provide within each of the blocks. <coughs> I would just add to that. Something like that. So as part of the, the outline plan provision, um, we're in terms of car parking, it's up to four um, six places, and really that allows the... Um, so it's not down to 0.33, which is what it says in the board. It's back up to 0.44, is it? It's not 0.4. Sorry, 0.33, I think mean, that's sorry, that's what they said. But the, the way that it's structured, is that in, in when the matters comes through, um, there is some flexibility for you know, the changing um, mindsets of the local authority. And the GLA um, have suggested that it could be car free, so don't find disabled car parking spaces. But it's likely stuck in the middle because um, you know, there's Merton Park and the council have a different view. So the way we've structured the, the outline is there's, there's some flexibility there as, as things change. Um, I also want to understand how you are wrapping your podium parking in, it says active frontages, but obviously mm -hmm. you've got entrances of vehicles and then you've got open ventilation, which is metal grills. Yes, that, that could be, so the podium, we have an access that I, I think is in that plan where the access to the podium parking will be. So apart from that, all the other frontages of the block will be residential. It's only going to be one entrance to the podium parking on one of the sides, and that's it. And I think, of course, that we have ventilation that it could be through uh, the ceiling or the so facade. That, 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 yes. It's single aspect, residential, uh, well, this is, on the ground floor, with the parking behind it? Um, yes, yes. Well, not all of them are going to be similarly 
single aspect because we have corner uh, as well. Um, this is a capacity. Um, I mean, we have done a capacity study because it's an online application. And it's not like we have gone through the design of each of the buildings. But yes, we have considered that and it has taken into consideration. Um, I assume the parking spaces will not be allocated. They'll be free for anyone to use. Um, Can you tell me where the cycle parking is? Um, that would be um, it's as part of the strategy, and I will be incorporating what we are thinking along here and maybe near the entrances, uh, the entrance to the park here. That's so the sign of but as a resident, it will be in the in the. Oh, for parking. the residents, yeah, yeah. Uh, we have uh, incorporated within each of the blocks like bin storage and cycle storage according to London and Merton requirements. Really? Yes. Is it in the podium? It's, where, not, where where is the parking it's considered it's communal and it's considered at the moment the capacity study and the ground floor. And again, it's going to be built yes, the but that's why because we are not going into the detail of design of each of the building. That's at the moment how we are considering and it works mm -hmm. and it's providing the the square meter that you should provide for the for the residents. It's just you're very clear about the car park, do you? Mm -hmm. No, no, I'm sorry if I was not clear enough, but in terms of the um, cycle parking for the residents of this scheme, each of the blocks, so each of these ones, mm -hmm. uh, we have cycle parking that will be communal. It's not going to be, at the moment, it's not considered within each of the mm -hmm. apartments, and we have been storage as well. And as part of this exercise, that of course we have to run a capacity study, you know, we can accommodate 850 homes. We have incorporated these spaces as well, according to London and Merton requirements, and it's all provided, and according to that. Yeah. Thank you. You're yeah, welcome. Um, do you have um, anything else to look? So, um, um, which is a shame. Um, do you have um, anything to think about um, design? Yes, they do, at page 38. And what's it say? It says that dual, dual aspect should be maximised, which is another way of saying, but not quite saying, mm -hmm. that single aspect should normally be avoided. Yeah. So I, one of my comments would be mm -hmm. that I think your design guys will be more in accordance with the okay so that's what it says okay. my next question is do you talk about whether a strategy for immunity and health and things within the design guide uh, yes that would be as part of the overarching principles yes. 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 yeah the only should provide the private domain the space and um, you're also building a adjacent to the pylons there's the proximity of pylons to um residential protege mm -hmm. Um, that's, I mean, I think it's included, it's mentioned, but um, the exclusion zone will not allow uh, any building, and it's also considered in the parameter plans. Yes. Okay. It's an exclusion zone of 56 meters, but it could be developed in any way for residential. Um, and then the next thing, um, it says to be updated, but you've started to show phasing in the parameter plans. Is that? Much in line with the phasing, I think again, in terms of the actual phase, because this is happening in value vision, um, whoever finishes the cycle, then perhaps you submit a phasing plan as part of the primary plan condition, which then will say how the cycle come forward. So at this, at this stage, it's, it's, it's you know, um, they will have to be dealt with by the primary condition from the cycle. And has phasing taken into account the um, facility needs and generation scheme potentially mm -hmm. for building 150 units. Does the phasing plan relate to that particularly? Because all your phasing seems to be at one end that you'll be basically accessing the site through um, sites that will come on at the very end to mm -hmm. build the first phase ones and does your design codes cover the meanwhile uses and what these 
you know, later stages are going to be like shift to, to take into account and things. Um, it will be considered. It's something that we, we are happy to incorporate. Yes. Uh, yes. And again, it, it, well, I suppose, <coughs> the, the idea of trying to do is to show how a scheme could be delivered. Mm -hmm. um, and okay. certainly it's a bit faster as well. And, and that's why um, a lot of these things were actually important as part of the mass application. Yeah, I think um, a, a strong guideline on yeah. what he says mm -hmm. to sit within the codes that covers shifts. Yeah, I think. Forward by we I mean, that's how you go down, so, yeah. Yes, I think within our overarching principles, without fixing exactly which are the different development phases. As you say, I think it's important, and we surely can do that, to put mitigation measures, what should be taken into consideration once that someone is uh, thinking about the phasing and how that will be developed. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, one more question for me. Will these roads be adopted by Martin? start out with this is essentially to define it and it is a giant cul-de-sac coming off a roundabout and that roundabout is a single lay road in each direction so there is it's a very constrained access to this site in terms of vehicles and also the entrance to the site you don't actually own that space 
So though there's a road, you don't own the land next to it, so you can't really control what's happening. I think in terms of the GLA, I've I mean, I do strongly endorse their position in that this should be a low-traffic neighbourhood. It's got a constrained entrance and exit. So if there was anything that happened, say, first water lane or something that stopped that single road, then all the traffic running off the estate is cut off. So I would, I would really push for this to be a low-traffic neighbourhood with, with far less car parking. And that's... And that's as we discussed last time, that's what the latest work is showing for the last 20 years. Um, there's been a reduction in car ownership, car use across the Western world. Um, the latest data now is showing that travel reduction is occurring at around train stations and car free developments, not around buses and things like that. So this is an ideal location for a really low traffic neighbourhood. My concern about the roads not being adopted is you really can't control the parking. If you can't control the parking, then this could easily become a sink estate where people just park on the verges or the roads when they feel like it, because there is no enforcement. And I think allied to that is also the fact, you know, you use phrases like the, um, I think we need to explore the park edge, because you described it as an emergency access route and also for servicing. These ones. Yeah. 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 Well, at the moment, it, it's it's a it's a public footpath, so it's just for pedestrians. Yes, that is going to be widening. Yeah. So yeah. now it's two meters. That's going yeah. to be around eight meters plus mm -hmm. the defense on space. Mm -hmm. And because of fire uh, regulations, you need to create another emergency, another vehicle access in case of emergency. So it's going to have borders, and yeah. it's going to be friendly for pedestrian and cyclists, but should allow for vehicles in case of emergency and servicing. Exactly, in case of emergency, but you can't define servicing, and therefore that's going to become a problem. Because what is servicing? Is it is it um, is servicing the postman, or is it Amazon, or is it Uber, or is it Ocado? And if you let any of those in. Mm -hmm then everybody else will come in. And you've got a lovely big paved area next to a park where people can pull up and park and have a picnic and stuff like that. It's just uncontrollable. So it needs to be bollarded off as an emergency yeah. route. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's, that's the only way to do it. There'll be a detailed um, service strategy that will have to be submitted as part of the resuming application. They'll have to deal with all of this and how it all works. Yeah. Um, because you know, this is a scheme of innovation. We think we could, could be there. Yeah, I won't take up too much more of your time. I think, yeah, I think that does alarm me a little bit if you're going to change block patterns because you're kind of proposing to build something and then you're saying, oh, it all might change a bit. So again, in terms of... Oh, my God.